Hi folks, Barnaby Dixon here. I've been traveling for a bit, but was able to make a fair bit of progress rebuilding my most well-known character, Dabchick. This is a process that has been going on for a few months now. We've had some great successes and some pretty dismal failures. However, a few things happen in this episode that may greatly speed up the process. Boom! Before I left for my travels, I was sent a brand new 3D printer from a company called Frozen. Look at these corner supports too. These fools know what they're doing. Now, at this point, I was a little bit skeptical, I suppose, because for the last few months, I'd been wrestling with a second-hand 3D printer, and I couldn't tell whether the bad results I was getting were because of my lack of experience or the difficulty of the resin printing process in general. This is footage of the old one, just to be clear. The new one came with a whole bunch of accessories. Oh, neat. Got loads of good stuff in here. Spatula, got some uh, gloves, got a menstrual cup. Frozen also supplied me with a wash and cure station. So this is the wash part of the wash and cure station. As I was lowering it down, you might be able to detect a slight pull on the end, and that's because it's actually magnetic. Oh, you're falling over. You okay? <laughs> In terms of size, this printer didn't seem too much larger than the last one. However, the build plate and the screen took up a much greater percentage of its surface. Now, since this print bed is larger than the prior 3D printers, it got me thinking. Um, this is Dabchik's largest part. It's essentially his abdomen. Now, we are going to double scale this one like we've been doing with the other pieces in order to get at those mechanisms. But at double scale, will it fit on this print bed? I don't know yet, I'm gonna do the measurements. 94 times two is 188. We're gonna to have to use the measuring tape. 180, that's just under 190. Okay, that looks like it will just fit. And if it doesn't, we can put it diagonal. Frozen kindly supplied me with lots of resin, and as a test piece, I used that initial lower resolution scan of Dabchik's head, started the print process, and left it going overnight. Good night, printer. Good luck. The next morning, this was the result. That is absolutely perfect. It was so accurate, in fact, that it fits perfectly on the lower jaw of the original. Really good, thank goodness. Still, a lot of detail has been added since to Dabchik's head, including a feather mechanism. I'm not sold on this yet, but the decision to include it or not may depend on how well it scales down to the original size. To refine it, I'm using Blender and the Boolean tool in particular. I love how the scanner speeds up the digital modeling processes, but getting precise mechanical fits require digital tweaking. And little by little, I got to the point where the mechanism worked really well. However, there is something that I knew wouldn't be discernible on the larger model, and that is strength. Whilst the movement is beautiful, Dabchik is not designed to be a museum piece. He goes out into the real world and has to be able to handle some of its roughness. Even carrying him around in and yanking him out of my pocket when needed has its hazards. If I sit on him or get him out too hastily, smaller elements might be inclined to break. At this point, the only way I can see this working is if I cast these pieces in metal. Now that's not out of the question. Frozen sent me some resin that is wax-like and may help accommodate this process. I'm facing a similar conundrum with Dabchik's wings. Since originally building him, I've made bird puppets with wings that fold out as well as flap. And preemptive of my travel, because I knew I'd be away from the resin printer, I quickly made these elements so that I could work out the correct spacings of such a mechanism. But besides strength, part count is also something to think about. Less parts mean less parts to break and less spares to carry. I considered this with the last model, to the point that each of his wings were symmetrical along this axis. This means that carrying a single spare was sufficient, as if one were to break, then that spare could replace either of them. The same goes for the feet and each segment of his toes. In the case of Dabchik, I think it's important to reframe the idea of a great puppet. You know, impressive mechanisms are wonderful, but even as he is, he has plenty of them. But more to the point, I don't think that people love Dabchik for his mechanisms. I think it's his character. It's been developing for about 10 years now, and that is what I feel people have warmed to. That being said, my mum does want him to have a pooping mechanism, so who knows. Next time, we'll be looking into scaling up Dabchik's parts with a special guest appearance from a certain Texan who, if you follow the arts channels on YouTube, should need no introduction. It's Bobby Duke. 
If you enjoy these videos and want to help the process of rebuilding Dabchik, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll also include some deals from another supporter of this channel, Frozen, who kindly supplied me with the 3D printer and the resins. That model, by the way, is the Sonic Mighty 4K, which you can get with an Aqua Grey 4K resin for 20% off if you use the following code. This is for US viewers only, so for other viewers, you can use the code BARNABY12 and you'll get 12% off any of Frozen's products. And if you want to play the system, you can use both of the codes and double your sa- Nope, that's not actually allowed.